Shall we start? Yes. Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bhavatu, Sahabhiryam Karavahari, Tejasvinavadhita Mastuma Nidvishavahari, Om Shanti 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 Rama story of Rama. As a as an avatar. Avatara means Bhagavan walking on earth. Avatar. This is the this is known as Itihasa. Iti ha Asa, this is how it was. <laughs> this is the word itihas. This is how it was. And as you know, there is many Ramayanas. What are some of them? Valmiki Ramayana, the most well known. Kamba Ramayana, Kamba from Tamil Nadu. Tulasi Das, Ram Charitamanas. And then many, many Ramayanas like this. And of course, there will be little flares of creativity by the author, little changes will be there, but for the most part, it is the same. The story of the vanquishment of evil, wrongdoing, adharma, and the sthapana of dharma. That is basically the, um, what is that, the uh, avatara's job in any case, isn't it? Avatara's job is to uh, remove the adharma and put back, re-establish dharma. This is what is the thing. And of course, one more Ramayana is there from the Sri Lankan version. Anybody knows that? So the Ramana is the hero in this. And Rama is the villain in this. So when I went to Sri Lanka, I was surprised to find Ravana Sita Bridge, Ravana Sita Garden, Ravana Sita Park, Ravana Sita Building. And then, and then you say, what happened? This is not our story. <laughs> and what would they say? 
we would say, well, you know, this Rama came and tried to spoil it all and it was just terrible. They were actually in love. And uh, I said, then why did Sita marry Rama? Oh, familial pressure. They have an answer for everything. <laughs> familial pressure, family put a lot of pressure. So poor thing, what did she do? She's a princess. She has to follow by the rules. And so she married uh, uh, Rama. But they pined for each other, so they had a they had an agreement that he would come and abduct, uh, so abduct her, so to speak, and take her away to her rightful place, which is what Sri Lanka. So then you say, you know, you 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 think this is logical, right? And so <laughs> then you say, but then why did she throw away all her head jewelry and hair jewelry and her? and her, uh, what is that, bangles and anklets to make a little trail to show that she had been, oh no, it's not how it happened. Ravana said, Priye, why are you wearing another man's jewels? He oh. gave them. Oh my God. So, <laughs> throw them all away. When we go to Sri Lanka, I'll get you lots of jewels. Oh my God. She threw them away. <laughs> so, this is the story. This is a love. <laughs> Two, three people I talk to and then uh, after the first time I just listen politely without uh, being <laughs> horrified and uh, just listen and I said, okay, because this just shows that, you know, Bhagavan is allowing this version also to be there. So, okay, there must be some purpose <laughs> being fulfilled. Who are we to remove? Because once it catches the popular imagination, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to route it out. It's not possible at all. So that is one more Ramayana, Sri Lankan Ramayana. Then we also have 4,000 verses of what is called Adhyatma Ramayana. Adhyatma, Atmana, Adhikritya, Nishthati, Iti Adhyatma. Meaning, the Ramayana centered not on Rama, not on Sita, not on even Ravana for that matter, but centered on what? Myself. Yeah. Atma is I. Adhyatma is centered on myself. Centered on myself is this Ramayana. So the Ramayana is all about me. It gives an uh, understanding of me. What is it that gives an understanding of me? Self-knowledge. <laughs> That's what gives an understanding of me. So the Ramayana as an allegory, as an allegorical narrative of self-knowledge is called Adhyatma Ramayana. It comprises 4,000 verses. Okay. It comprises 4,000 verses. 4,000 verses means how many of them will we be able to cover? Zero. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because it's just a lot of uh, verses. So I will give you a little bit of a synopsis. And then we'll, you know, uh, we we'll just have to be, uh, that will have to suffice for the length of or the time that has been allow allotted to me, which is one hour. So then we have a, um, first before we get into this, uh, the story itself, we should see the major ways in which it departs, it, Adhyatma Ramayana departs from Valmiki Ramayana. And it is very telling why it does that. So the major, the, the main thing, is that in the Adhyatma Ramayana, also in the Ram Charitmanas, um, I think that there is a, uh, this particular thing is there. What is that? The shadow Sita business. What is the shadow Sita business? <laughs> so the Sita that is abducted is not our real Sita. More about that later, what that means and all that. The Sita that is abducted is just a shadow of herself. So the real Sita, when she desires the, the golden, uh, what is it called? Yeah, deer. 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 The golden deer she desires. Rama says, my dear, you need to, you need to go in the fire now. Wait, she may say. The, the fire chapter comes much later. <laughs> no, no, no. You need to enter the fire now because the fire is not going to burn you. It's going to protect you and because she's very pure. So the fire cannot burn her and she being the goddess, 
she is immune to the fire which is like a father figure which embraces her and keeps her safe while the shadow sita who is equally sweet equally beautiful equally amiable uh, for all practical purposes and for the world to see follows rama and appears to get kidnapped appears to go to um, appears to be taken to sri lanka and appears to be rescued later on okay so then this is this is there in the adhyatma ramayana the real sita is just in in a kind of hibernation or in a, in a hibernation or fire hibernation so and then she is uh, she comes back afterwards when that uh, so called what is that called agni pariksha takes place then the real sita emerges from the fire and then all is well that kind of a thing uh, the uttara ramayana is seen as an interpolation what is this uttara ramayana where she is taken by lakshmana to a picnic by herself the pregnant sita and abandoned in the forest because a washer man said oh she has been living in the kingdom of another man how can she be the queen of ayodhya okay and then uh, uh, that is a later interpolation by a patriarchal mindset or somebody having a patriarchal mindset and who wanted to rewrite the ending of the story that is not there the ramayana finishes with the crown uh, prince of ayodhya and the crown princess being ordained to be the rulers this is what the the thing is so as you can see this uh, rama is itself a very this is how the adhyatma ramayana begins rama since parvati is in meditation and parvati approaches lord shiva for some instruction and some q and a this is how their marriage is their marriage is just studying texts all the time <laughs> sometimes the guru gita sometimes this sometimes something else she is uh, sometimes she is uh, asking about vishnu sahasranama this time she says my lord she tells uh, who she tells lord shiva my heart is not at ease why is your heart not at ease my beloved he asks she says my heart is not at ease because i find rama being a very confusing figure if he was bhagavan because he is an avatara avatara means what fully cognizant of who he is and look in the story also of how rama's life and see this krishna's life unfolds krishna does not sit and cry when he is not given the butter you don't see baby krishna going <laughs> what does he do climb over the backs of other boys and then steal it he takes so krishna is a very different figure and in parvati's mind is that unrest because she says here is the fellow who cries and like a mad man he hugs the tree and says have you seen my sita have you seen sita after she is abducted is he really bhagavan or is he has he become steeped in maya this is what i'd like to know i find rama a very confusing figure and then again why did he leave ayodhya because the stepmother created a ruckus the stepmother you know did not know how to spell rama so what did she do had a big drama okay with a d in front of rama <laughs> so had a drama about rama and then as a result oh he trotted off to the forest because to keep the father's wishes which kind of a bhagavan does that if you are god why would you do that parvati asked why could he not with his powers god means ishvara is everything so with his powers he could have put an end to it he could have said to kai kai silence <laughs> this is not happening i am not going anywhere i am bhagavan <laughs> why did and lord krishna declares himself to be bhagavan where in the bhagavad gita yada yada hi dharmasya ya nirbhavati bharata 
अभ्युत्थानमधर्मस्यदात्मा सृजाम्य पिद्राणय साधूना विनाशा चुष्कृता धर्म संस्थापनाय संभवामी युगे युगे He declares himself. He says, "I have, I have created myself with the force of my own Maya Shakti. I have given myself a body, and my purpose is to establish dharma and root out a dharma. The, uh, this is who I am. Janma cha maranam cha me divyam. My birth and death are both divine. They are not. They are otherworldly. They are not worldly. They are immaculate." And so, uh, janma, karma, everything is divine. And so, this is you, you know you 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 cannot uh, 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 he 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 declares himself. So we don't see any such declaration of Rama in the Rama. Rama cries, Rama screams, Rama yells, Rama says, "Oh, I don't." And then Rama says also uh, when he goes to sage Vasistha, now what does he say? My heart is at unease. You can imagine an Arjuna saying that in the Bhagavad Gita, and Krishna telling, giving him a pep talk. But here, the avatar itself needs a pep talk. What kind of a Bhagavan is this? Parvati says, "How can I be devoted to such a Bhagavan? How can I? How can I have devotion? Because all he is exhibiting in this avatar are human traits." Fallibility, weakness, and then he says, "I don't know how I Ravana is big. I don't know how to uh, have this war." And then uh, the whole uh, Aditya Hridayam is taught to him to give give him some courage. And then uh, he goes to uh, another time. He goes to Sage Vasistha, and then he says. Uh, I I don't know how how to get enlightened. <laughs> Please, I want to know what are the sadhanas that I can do in order to gain this knowledge. And then we have a text called Yoga Vasistha. Yeah, very strict text. If you start reading it, then you know you feel like going to a forest somewhere. <laughs> Except with because of deforestation, there are no forests left. That's the thing. <laughs> But it gives intense vairagya this text. So naturally, because of these reasons, Parvati is confused how to be devoted to this Rama who has nothing except human frailty, human limitations, and Shankara Shiva explains. Shiva says, "No, no, no." You got it all wrong. Why? Because he has human frailty. Because he is not supposed to be an embodiment of Ananda. Krishna is the embodiment of Ananda, and Rama is the embodiment of Dharma. Dharma means what is correct, what is right. And what is right for me? All these three things constitute dharma: sadharan dharma, samanya dharma, vishesh dharma, swadharma. All of them together constitute dharma. And so, this is what it entails. I am, you know, I am the one that is uh, uh, that is uh, needing to have a dharmic life. Why? It is the first thing that is desired. Oh, but I don't want to be good. Who says that's the first thing I want? I want money. I want fame. I want wealth. Not necessarily that I want to be righteous or good. Why is it the first purushartha? You may not want to be good, but do you want other people to be good to you? Yes. No. What happened after lunch? <laughs> Before lunch, at least one or two voices were coming. <laughs> Do you want other people to be good or not? Yes. I want them to open the door when I pass. I want them to tell me the truth. I don't want people to defraud me. I don't want people to um, thieve uh, from me, rob me. Now, how do you ensure that? By not robbing others, by not thieving, by by being polite, by doing all kinds of things. and so this is 
This is the story, really. And so, when you see an avatara who is an embodiment of dharma, that means he, she has to follow the dharma no matter what. And if the avatara is following the dharma in a human body, then of course there will be pain. They have to go through pain. This is the demonstration of dharma. Dharma is not easy. If dharma is easy, everybody would follow. Adharma is easy, at least in the beginning. <laughs> it looks easy. After that, you have to pay for it. You have to pay for it twice. twice. First in the local lockup and then in the karmic lockup. <laughs> Karmically, you have to pay. And then, even if the lockup, local lockup you escape, karma catches. The police catch first and then karma catches afterwards. <laughs> you have to pay doubly for both the, for, for anything done. So, but Adharma looks easy in the beginning and then uh, dharma looks difficult. Dharma is very difficult because it involves sacrifice. And Lord Rama shows what? An embodiment of sacrifice. That's why he hurts. There is that pain and that he demonstrates to show us all that following dharma is not easy. It's not going to be a candied life. Full of, you know, when you fall, when you make dharma your main purpose, the life is going to be peppered with a lot of difficulties and inconveniences which you have to go through and in order to grow, in order to, uh, in, in order to just be one with this dharma, in order to master dharma. So this is the reason he shows the human frailties and all these things and then he says, uh, uh, Lord Shiva directs Parvati to a later portion of this Adhyatma, Adhyatma Ramayana, a few verses, uh, a set of verses, a subset of verses called Rama Gita. And in Rama Gita, Hanumanji comes after they have gone back to Ayodhya. They vanquish the, they vanquish who? Ravana and the whole uh, bad baddies in Sri Lanka and they go back in an expandable plane. It can be a two-seater or a 50-seater because all the Vanaras, we shouldn't call them monkeys. Naro va nava iti shanka. Are they human beings or not? This is the doubt. That's why Vanaraha and so these Vanaras, these humanoids, this humanoid tribe to which Hanumanji belong to, they all go to Ayodhya. And there, Mother Sita gives, there is that wonderful story, Mother Sita gives, bestows on Hanumanji, who saved her life, a beautiful pearl necklace. And what does he do? Break it. Hmm? He doesn't break it, he cuts through, he bites through it. Bites through each pearl and poo, spits it out. Again, bites through the pearl, spits it out. Lakshmana is very upset because he's very protective of Mother Sita and he says, what are you doing? The goddess gave you a necklace and you're destroying it. He says, I'm not destroying it, I'm looking for Rama. There is no Rama. <laughs> and wherever there is no Rama, I'm not interested in it, I'm throwing it out. Then Sita, taking pity on Hanuman, says, I'm not angry at all. In fact, by your bhakti, you have shown me that you are ready for mukti. Sita becomes the teacher of Brahma Vidya in the Adhyatma Ramayana. And she says, the first thing to know is, who is Rama? And as soon as he hears the word Rama, Hanumanji gets into this prayerful pose. And Sita has to tell him that all is fine. But Rama is much more than an object of devotion. So Rama is presented in three ways. One is as an object of devotion. That is right in the beginning. Because in the beginning of the quest, the mind is all over the place. The mind is everywhere. The mind does not find a place to rest. The mind does not have a place to even, you know, uh, what is that, have that ekagrata. Focus. The mind cannot have focus. Mind is distracted. And especially in this day of what are they called? Devices. Before we only had desires. 
Now we have devices and designers <laughs> to contend with. This is the problem. And so the mind is all over the place. For such a mind, what do we need? We need japa, chitta naishchalyam. And the mind which is full of all these devices and desires is thinking, who shall I manipulate next? What shall I get out of this person next? How shall I go about next? How to be a go-getter? This is how the, the mind full of desires behaves. And so for that mind, what needs to be done is that it needs the, it needs, uh, in order to bring it to a certain kind of a focus, you need to give it an object of devotion. So this is Rama as Ishta Devata, a personal deity. And then anybody can say, he's just like me. Why? I cry. He also cries. When Sita left, he also cries. And I also sometimes wonder, what should I do? What should I not do? He also, we see him wondering what to do, what to not do. And so in this way, there is a kind of a bond of devotion uh, with Rama as a, a, a god or, uh, to be worshipped or by choice. An avatara to be worshipped by choice. Parvati reveals that. She says, but that's not the way to, that's not the place to stop. You have to go a little further than that. You have to go a little further than that and see this Rama as that consciousness. What is this consciousness? Sat Chit Ananda. That which exists, Sat the source of all existence, satyam, sat, and then that which is chit. Because what kind of a sat is it? Is it a dead sat or is it a sentient sat? Sentient sat. That is chit. Chit is sat, sat is chit. How long does do this sat chit last? Forever. Forever, ever, 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 ever. Totally forever. And so that is ananda. Because that which I want is forever. I don't want that which does not last. I don't want, uh, you know, I don't want something. I don't want movie. I want forever. Even marriage people don't want. That's why in the fifth wedding vow, they say, what? This time it is forever. <laughs> <laughs> what about the other four times? Shh, let's not talk about that. And you tell, somebody tells, oh, my son, my daughter got a job. What does the other parent say? Is it permanent? <laughs> That's what they want. It is, it's not about the job. It's about the permanence that one seeks. Then another example. Then the, the other question comes. The uh, How is your house? Do you own your house? No, I rent it. Or even if you own it, actually you are renting it from the bank, okay? Yeah. <laughs> bank has all the papers. But still, is it your own? Is it permanent? Is it forever? This shows that what one wants is not the thing itself, but the forever. That forever is known as ananta and translated as human desire, it is known as ananda, the joy that comes out of this forever. And this is what one wants. And this is how Lord Rama must be seen. And then in the, as the story goes, Rama is sitting right there. And then Rama says something which is very interesting. Rama says, okay, I'll take it from here. <laughs> Sita, I will take it from here. And then he says, this consciousness is seen in many different ways. And I want you to see this consciousness free and space-like, he says, but in uh, two or three different ways. And he gives, takes the example of space and talks about it in, uh, in uh, some, uh, some ways which becomes, which makes it easier for, un uh, for us to understand in terms of what this example is trying to show. So the first way, he says, is like looking at the sky, Akasha. You look at the space and what do you see? A vast expanse of undifferentiated space. Then you look at the sky but this time through a lake. 
you look down you don't look up you look down and then what do you see in the lake you see the reflection of the sky then you keep a pot of water and then you gaze in the water then you find a small little sky in the water so first you have the sky which has no bounds and the sky that is as though bounded by the 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 paridhi the limits the so called limits of the lake and then you find the the third example of the sky which is reflected in a pot of water so the unbound sky is shuddha chaitanya consciousness unconditioned by anything else at all and the sky obtaining in the lake is what is just exactly how the jagat is reflected in this sachidananda you have the variegated jagat and you can look at the reflection of uh, of the sky in the uh, in the lake and you can also count the clouds and everything like that and what is this this is the uh, the jagat which is nothing but a manifestation of satchidanandam brahma which is all rama alone so these are the various uh, iterations of rama that the author would like us to know the author is is veda vyasa according to some and then it appears in the purana brahmananda purana and brahmanda purana but then it uh, the author is also supposed to be um, it is also ascribed to one ramananda a medieval saint so we really don't know the authorship so then the third one the part of water is the uh, uh, abhasa chida bhasa is so just like we we usually take the example of the sun being reflected in a pot of water but here the sky itself a piece of the sky is reflected in the pot of water and so that is called chida bhasa this is the so called association as though association of this chit with the buddhi chit avachinna chaitanya so this chit the deha avachinna chaitanya so this chit which is as though uh, obtaining in the buddhi so the buddhi being a clear source of reflection is able to take the brightness the light and the knowledge etc the light portion the existence portion and the knowledge portion of the chit and broadcast it and use it in the everyday life to make various assumptions transactions etc 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 so then this is the uh, uh, this is how to understand that and then parvati says this is uh, this is interesting but i am still confused why are you confused <laughs> i am confused she says because then if everything is rama 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 then the sachidananda is rama and then chidakasha is rama and then chit is rama and the chit obtaining in the buddhi is also what rama then why does the why is the jiva all twisted up <laughs> why is the jiva not following dharma why is the jiva not godly why does the jiva behave oddly and <laughs> <laughs> because that's what happens if one is not godly so then now uh, why why is this discrepancy there and then rama says that the whole world is asleep the entire world is asleep all the beings are asleep in the addictive sleep of atma avidya in the uh, terrible sleep of atma avidya it is like a kumbhakarna sleep see that is what that also symbolizes kumbhakarna means what he cannot wake up meaning even if you prop him with the help of the mahavakya tatvamasi etc still he will go off to sleep <laughs> no desire to learn nothing so the jiva is anadi avidya sutta 
jeeva hai the jeeva is the one that has been marinating in the sleep of avidya dormancy tamas for a very very long time in fact there is no beginning to this avidya so this fellow is forever asleep to his her own nature there is no nature at all that is that to which the person is awakened and so therefore because of being asleep to one's own nature the one is therefore awakened to what one's non nature both these things are there one is asleep to one's nature agrahanam and therefore what takes place is anyatha grahanam not grasping what uh, not grasping the truth of myself is one problem and then grasping what i am not taking myself to be what i am not that's the second problem in animals there's only one problem what is that problem the god the dog doesn't know i am god simple dog doesn't know vedanta dog doesn't know there is a text called a highly erudite text called sat darshanam dog doesn't know there is adhyatma rama dog doesn't know anything and if you let the dog be it is actually quite happy so agrahanam or simple avidya does not cause sorrow but if somebody comes and says no 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 my dog is unhappy my dog is depressed you know what ask them how long has the dog been with you <laughs> ask them that <laughs> ah okay now it explains <laughs> dog is not depressed cat is not depressed mm so the but then what is the difference between the dog and the human being the dog simply doesn't know its own nature not knowing its own nature it is not upset it seems to be fine when i don't know what i don't know ignorance is bliss okay so the animals live because they are they are programmed by ishvara they live in the world of ishvara without questioning this world why am i to- i dog why am i not this one why am i not that one there is no uh, going against that but in the human being the agnyanam has two iterations one is i don't know myself and since there is total free will i take myself to be what i am not the will is totally free and so since there is total self consciousness i take myself to be what i am not which is what i am an idiot nobody loves me i don't care i don't want i am not happy all these things so therefore this is the uh, this is exactly the problem the problem is one of not only not knowing myself which is part a of atma agnyanam but taking myself to be what i am not which is part b therefore there is suffering therefore there is pain therefore there is samsara this is what rama says they don't understand who i am then sita pipes in and sita says what in fact they don't even understand that i am your power they think that you have done everything oh rama but actually it is me who is doing everything the doer the mover the shaker is the shakti and the one who is stationary is you the non doer the non mover the non shaker but in whose presence all movement all moving all shaking and everything is happening this is a very beautiful section very lovely section where both of her first she becomes the teacher of brahma vidya because why does she have to start teaching because brahma vidya brahman cannot objectify itself so therefore the teacher comes and teaches very nice and then uh, he comes in the form of an avatar the one who is to be worshiped and then continues the teaching we find a similar thing in the kena upanishad where the yaksha uh, comes in the assembly of uh, bhagavans where various deities agni indra vayu etc 
and then the yaksha get crashes the party because they are not acknowledging Bhagavan. They say what? Asmakameva vijayaha, asmakameva mahima iti. This is our glory and then our victory. And yaksha says, <coughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> yaksha is Brahman. But nobody is able to find out who it is. And then finally, at least with Agni and Vayu, there is some interaction. And then when uh, Indra approaches, the yaksha disappears. And then right there, he meditates and a beautiful resplendent goddess comes and teaches Brahma Vidya. Because it is that which cannot be objectified. It is you, yourself. This is how uh, the, this is why uh, Goddess Sita is the teacher in the beginning. After that, Rama has the Ishta Devata joins and talks about his uh, transcendental nature as Satchidanandam Brahma. And, uh, and then, um, so this is, this is the synopsis of the whole thing. Then they have, then you get very, uh, then there are some smaller details which we don't have the time to go into. Like how the association, how the association or uh, the, not association, the identification with the body uh, uh, rather than the identification with the chit, with, with such chit. Instead, what do I do? I associate it with the body. I identify with the mind. I identify with the senses. And what is born is Jeevatvam. Jeeva is not born. <laughs> and this Jeevatvam means what? Jeeva ness. Jeeva hood is born. And this Jeeva hood is what? It's not even born. It is there. But this is how it comes comes to comes to be. It is shown. And then this Jeeva hood is a superimposition upon that which is free upon that Satchidananda which is free of Jeeva hood. And what about Ishvara hood? Ishvara is needed to keep the, the Jagat in tow. Having created the Jagat, somebody has to look after it. You can't just leave the Jagat to be babysat by all the Jeevas. There will be chaos. <laughs> so somebody has to follow, may make them follow the laws, somebody has to do that and so this is what is called, this is the same Satchidananda doing this job as it were, is called, is, is this phenomena is called Ishwaratvam. So we have Ishwara hood on one side, Jiva hood on the other side. If you remove the hood, what do you see? <laughs> Satchidananda. One is called creator, one is called misery, and then really what? <laughs> Both of them are the shining self. That's all they are. The shining self-evident self. The same thing is expressed in Panchadashi. So the, it's like the Maya, the, the Shakti is the seamstress. Seamstress means she causes stress. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> And so, what is this same stress? What does she do? She, the, uh, she these things, she says that uh, the, she creates a beautiful cape, a glorious cape with, made of velvet, made of gold embroidery, and for the borders, there are stars and planets and galaxies. And Ishvara, you know, this Satchidanandam Brahma wears that and has got the epithet Ishvara. There's a crown. When Jiva goes and says, what about my cape? <laughs> I also want a cape. Okay, tell me. Give me your measurements. I'm small. <laughs> tell me something about yourself because I need to make this cape to fit you and your description. Nobody loves me. I'm always poor. I'm always wanting. I am an idiot. And so the cape is lined with tears and fears made of tattered quilt. And then, well, you know, Ishvara has a crown, Jiva has what? A dunce cap, fool's cap, okay? This is because of our association with Atma Ajnana. So when you remove the costumes, what is there is the self-shining self. It's like, in other words, the same child 
coming dressed in different costumes at the door on Halogi to get three times candy. <laughs> this is what it is. When you remove the mask, it's the same child. And so this is uh, this is in short the uh, Ramayana, Adhyatma Ramayana. Many many such beautiful beautiful things are presented. There's a lot of stuti. <coughs> stuti means there's a lot of praise of this vidya, of this understanding. And what is the result of this understanding and how some samsara gets a big, big kick and samsara does not come back. All this is given. But then, when we look at the whole Ramayana, it really, really lends itself to self-knowledge completely. Because there is this beautiful song which is inspired by the Adhyatma Ramayana. Khelati mama hridaye. Ramaha khelati mama hridaye. This Rama plays in my heart. Oh, he really is playing in my heart. And what is this Rama? Atma Rama. Atma Rama. The Atma which is Rama. The word Rama, grammatically, if you take, it is nothing but self-knowledge. Ramante yasmin yoginaha. The yogis revel in which? That is Rama. What do the yogis revel in? Atma. Oneself. So, Ram, not R-U-M, okay? Yeah, please. <laughs> this is an ashram, okay? <laughs> which also, unfortunately, ends in Ram. Okay, never, never mind. So, um, so then, Ram to revel. Sanskrit Ram. Ram to revel. And so this revelry is, one can only revel in something which is, is a source of joy. Can you revel in a sad sob story? No. You want to get away from it. You can only revel in that which is a source of joy. And so the, the only source of joy, the true source of joy is what? Your own self. So therefore, Atma Rama, that is the word Rama, the name Rama, is the meaning of reveling in the truth of oneself. That is what it is. And then the song goes, okay, so this Rama is playing in my heart. Shanti, Shanti, Videha, Sutta, Sahajari. So, Videha Sutta, the daughter of Videha, because that was a kingdom from where she came. That's why she's called Vaidehi. But Videha also means she who is without a body. <laughs> Very interesting. Vaidehi means she who doesn't have a body. Why does she not have a body? See, if we come back to the shadow Sita, she doesn't have a body because she's all pervasive. She's all knowledge. She's all Shakti. She doesn't need a body. So, uh, so but she's the embodiment of Shanti. Shanti means what? Tranquility. That tranquility is in fact, people talk, talk of this tranquility in various ways. Some people call it peace. Some people call it happiness. Some people call it absence of disturbance. But really it is that tranquility, peace of mind. This peace of mind is highly valued and that is exactly what one wants. What one wants is this peace of mind and this peace of mind being very highly valued is sought after by everybody. So therefore Sita is sought after by who? Ravana, the one who has not only no peace of mind, but ten heads, <laughs> full of ego, unable to make a decision. Even with one head, how, how quickly can you make a decision? Tell me. Be truthful here. Yeah. Even one head is difficult to manage. Imagine <laughs> five this side, four this side. Highly inconvenient. How to go through doors? First of all, that is a, a big problem. And full of indecision, full of wrong and conflicting ideas. Some wants to go along with dharma, some wants to go away from dharma, all these. So this conflict is seeking Sita. But who, who does Sita belong to? Rama. 
What does that mean? If Rama is self-knowledge, Sita is the product of the prasada of self-knowledge and Sita being the prasada of self-knowledge belongs with Rama. Because it's the outcome of self-knowledge. Without self-knowledge, you cannot have it. That's why she can never be Ravana's. Despite Ravana Sita Park. Okay? <laughs> she can never belong to Ravana. She is only the Sahachari. Means she walks along with the one who is committed to self-knowledge. She in the form of peace, tranquility, ananda, etc. The quiet part of ananda is Shanti. And that is this... Uh, uh, Sita. And so then, uh, so Rama means self-knowledge. The pursuer of self-knowledge always has by her side, his side what? Tranquility and joy. So, Dahara Yodhya Nagara Vihari. Ayodhya means what? The unconquerable one. That which can never be conquered. This is why Rama is dear to the heart of the, the, the Indians. Not because of some story, but because of what this really represents. is the self-knowledge. That's why it is dear. So Ayodhya, the inconquerable. What is that? The self cannot be conquered. That is where it is. That is the place. That is the place of abidance of Rama and Sita together because that self centered on that self which is inconquerable. And then who is this Rama? Moha Mahamaya Taraka Kari. So Taraka Sura and all these things that were killed by him were in the form of Moha, Maya, delusion. And all kinds of distractions. Even Ramana is a big delusion and a huge distraction, waste of time. And then, Ragadvesha Mukhasura Mari. The one who kills these Asuras. Who are these Asuras? My own untrained Ragas and Dveshas. My own untrained Ragas and Dveshas are these various asuras, these rakshasas that run amok and hijack my pursuit. They hijack my pursuit. I want to go here. I want to go on the path of self-knowledge. I want to go and therefore I want to walk on the path of dharma. Where do they take me? To adharma. They take me elsewhere. And, and so this is the, uh, the this is very very beautiful. So now what happens if Shanti is kidnapped? <laughs> ah, this is the beauty of it. Very interesting. Shanti gets abducted. By what? By the ten-headed monster. Who is the ten-headed monster? <laughs> Ravana. But what, what does Ravana symbolize? Confusion. Delusion. Uh, uh, born of Atma, Ajnanam, of course. Raga, Dvesha. Because Ra Ravana actually had a very good home training. He was uh, a Brahmana. He knew the Samaveda. He, knew, he was a great musician. He was a great devotee. But somewhere hubris set in and he wants world domination. I don't know why all these Rakshasas want world domination. <laughs> world is going to dogs. But they want to dominate this world. <laughs> Huge waste of time. And not being satisfied with himself wanting a boon, he drags this Kumbhakarna, who is the incarnation of Tamas, in front of Lord Shiva and says, okay, he will give two boons, one for you, one for me. And, and Kumbhakarna says, I don't want any boon, who is this Shiva? And he says, no, 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 Shiva can give you, ask for Nitya, Nitya means forever. And that fellow has no desire to ask for anything, he says, Nidra, <laughs> means sleep. And he's a big fellow. And suddenly he just becomes a little like a hillock. And Ravana is very cross with Lord Shiva. He says, look what, have you, what you've done. How am I going to take him home now? <laughs> I have to carry this mountain back all the way. What have you done? Now, take that back because he didn't mean to ask that. And Shiva says, no, once it is taken, and once it is given, it cannot be taken back. What can I do? You can use the boon that you have. <laughs> See how clever Shiva is to 
uh, neutralize some of the effect of his boon so that at least he can walk home with you. <laughs> so then he says, okay, okay, all right. He's very cross with him because both of them lost their boons due to aviveka, due to lack of vairagya, no vairagya, no viveka. And then so he says, okay, six months on and six months off, like a bear. And so he woke up and then he quickly took him back to uh, Sri Lanka in time for his long nap. This is, this is exactly how it is. And then we see that when the, the Shanti is abducted by confusion, delusion and distraction, and the uh, service and, and, a, and a mind that is in the service of ragadveshas. And self-knowledge without Shanti is, is incomplete. That's why Rama cries, goes from tree to tree and has to get the Sita back. Sita has to come back and tranquility has to be restored. Otherwise, the story is not complete. That's why the Uttara Ramayana is an interpolation because once the Shanti is restored, why will she be banished to the forest? Makes no sense at all. So then, the, the battles rage and then even for Hanumanji, there is a nice metaphor. Hanumanji is first a Vanara, jumps from tree to tree. But what kind of a Vanara? A Vanara who is a Bhakta, meaning even the, the, the Hanumanji uh, represents the monkey mind which jumps up and down and all around. It represents the monkey mind, but the monkey mind is trained by Japa, Rama, 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 by Bhakti. That Bhakti becomes the gateway to Mukti indirectly. Bhakti becomes the gateway to knowledge, which is a direct gateway to Mukti or freedom and this is exactly what the, uh, the Vanara symbolizes. They, they symbolize service, a life of service, Karma Yoga and Bhakti. They symbolize the means to come out of this conundrum, this ocean of samsara, which now speaking of oceans, Hanumanji has to cross. It is a leap of faith. That is exactly what it is. It's a leap of faith. And uh, so this crossing is the ocean of samsara because the ocean of samsara has all kinds of terrible darkenies and, and demons and demonesses and all these things there. He is successful and goes there. And what is there? The enemy territory. Where is the enemy territory? Right here in the Ragadveshas which have to be vanquished by Bhakti. That is what it is. So what does he do after going there? He lights the whole place on fire. <laughs> First finds Sita safe in a garden somewhere. She, she, she is unassailable because Shanti cannot really be kidnapped. Shanti belongs to the one who deserves it. It can never be for the one who is uh, uh, a, a, you know, who is, who, who, who is not worthy of it. So she is in a garden of no shoka. Ashoka Vana. The garden of happiness is where Shanti, Sita belongs and she is sitting there and then what else? And then the uh, Ravana sets fire to Sri Lanka meaning there is no place for all these Ragadveshas. The place where the, 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 uh, the Atma Adhyanam is Sri Lanka and the, the Atma Adhyanam is the place which harbors the Asuras of Ragadveshas and all of them are killed. Only one is left, the biggest and the uh, saved for the last, the biggest and the best Asura or the biggest and the worst Asura. Who is that? Ravana. What is Ravana? Ahankara. So first Rama keeps shooting him in the head. And then what happens? Nothing happens. The head goes up and comes back and reattaches itself. And then Vibhishana, the brother of Rama, Ravana tells him, not there, <laughs> strike his heart. Why the heart? Because the, the, what is the arrow? The arrow is, and the bow and the, uh, the arrow is Atma Vidya. Atma Vidya being taught to this confused, terrible Jiva who has gone on the wrong way now. And Ra Rama becomes the teacher 
and the and the arrow is the vritti then that vritti goes straight into the heart because the head it is not logic the head the vritti cannot enter the head the vritti has to pierce the heart full of all kinds of wrong notions about oneself about the world about ishvara and so the, the vritti in the form of rama's arrow and what is the arrow tatvamasi arrow pierces the heart the bow is the upanishad and the arrow is the mahavakya tatvamasi it pierces the heart and ravana gets moksha when this is something people don't like they say what do all these baddies have to get moksha here i have been studying brahma vidya for 20 years <laughs> बीस <laughs> साल से वी आर फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी ईयर्स वी पिस रहे हैं वी आर यू नो बीन कम्प्लीटली फाउंटेड एंड वी आर कीपिंग ऑन वी आर यून ट्राइंग टू गो बियॉन्ड द बेसिक्स एंड वी आर वी आर ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस एंड दिस राक्षस विदाउट डूइंग एनीथिंग गेट्स मोक्ष जस्ट बींग किल्ड बाय द लॉर्ड दैट इवन दैट वॉट इज दैट अदर वन प्रहलाद वॉट इज दैट hiranya kashipu hiranya kashipu gets moksha ravana gets moksha and here i am not doing any wrong thing and i am trying to be more uh, uh, less than less asuric in my life and how come i am not getting moksha <laughs> to this we have to say don't take these stories too seriously okay they are stories point number 1 Point number two, we have to say those asuras are all ourselves <laughs> ah. if those asuras are getting moksha you are also getting moksha don't worry <laughs> because those asuras are not outside of us kama krodha all these heads of of this fellow that's why he doesn't know where he is headed okay he has so many heads he is confused that is ourselves alone that is our own ragas our own dveshas our own problems and that is what we have that is what is vanquished and when that is taken away by bhakti and gyanam the bhakti and seva karma yoga and bhakti gives an opening where one can pursue this knowledge and then when one pursues this knowledge the tatvamasi touches the heart it pierces the heart there is no more what about me what about you no all there is is this one glorious being rama i am rama i am one with rama om tat sat om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamadasyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 hari om shri gurubhyo namaha hari om any questions No, no. I told you. Either Veda Vyasa, it's attributed to Veda Vyasa. Some people attributed to one saint called uh, Swami Ramananda in the thirteenth, fourteenth century, medieval century. We don't know. It doesn't matter. It's just delightful. That's all we know. Yes. this is you know uh, a combination of karma yoga karma yoga means living for more than oneself living in the world of service sacrifice keeping ishvara in view so giving up doership bringing ishvara as the doer and then accepting what comes as prasada even though it's difficult to accept that's how the kama and krodha go acceptance should be there but what if i cannot accept can you accept your non acceptance yes. yes no yeah if you say yes okay no nothing more to be said if you say no then i'll ask another question can you accept the non acceptance of your non acceptance <laughs> then you have to say yes at some point <laughs> otherwise we'll be here till tomorrow <laughs> anything else yeah yeah that's part of this adhyatma ramayana yes yes it is all there it is a very beautiful text 
worthy of looking into. On this one, no, this is the first two time I'm even talking about this one. <laughs> so is it planning like a Adhyatma No such plan. We'll see. If it's meant to happen, it will be. Yeah. Om Tat Sir. Thank you all. Thanks to Indika Moksha for giving me this opportunity to talk on Adhyatma So mm -hmm. tomorrow morning we continue. Yeah, tomorrow morning. The same time, 9.30 sharp, session 1, and then 10.30, 10.45, session 2.